Hi, Todd from Inner Fidelity here. Today, we're gonna to talk about a headphone that I've long wanted to get my hands on and have a listen to. This is the new Sony MDR-Z1R. It's their flagship headphone. It's $2,299. It's a full-sized, circumoral, uh, sealed headphone, although it doesn't seal as much as some sealed headphones do, I would c almost call it semi-open. Uh, <clears throat> but it, uh, it's a really uh, very nicely designed headphone. It has a, a leather uh, outer on the headband. Uh, the interior of the headband is a uh, um, beta titanium, so it's very, very flexible. It has a very nice caliper pressure. It's very comfortable when you wear it uh, in terms of the caliper pressure and fits very nicely. The, um, Sony has created, uh, let's see if I can, if you can see this, the ear cups have a little protrusion on the bottom part of the ear cup here that tucks nicely under the ear so that ear pads um, really do mate very very well with the side of your head and seal very well. Um, <clears throat> the uh, extension arms are aluminum they they work very nicely and detented there's a some laser etched markings here that show you how far each headband is extended so you can adjust them to the same number when you're looking at them and they adjust very nicely um, the hangers are aluminum and in the bottom of the hanger is an integral connector that unscrews and it is a 3.5 millimeter TRS plug and a jack in here that's threaded so that when you put the connector on and thread it back into position, it um, remains nice and tight. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Uh, the ear pads are very ample. There's lots of room in here for your ears. They're, they're shaped like an ear. And the pads are a nice grade of memory foam. So that's very, very nice. <clears throat> um, all in all, I would say this is, it, it's 380 something grams, I think. It's very, very comfortable to wear. So uh, full marks to Sony in terms of uh, comfort and, and wearability on these headphones. There's two um, major kind of technological uh, things. Oh, I should go through cables really quick. The first cable is a three meter cable, so it's pretty long. Has this uh, ridged um, insulator on it. I've uh, Sony uses these this a lot in their headphones. This particular cable, and I I, I like it because it's not very microphonic. But I I'll caution you that if you're here in Montana and you're outside and it's cold, it gets very very stiff. So it's kind of an odd cable in that way. It is terminated in a 3.5 millimeter tip ring sleeve plug and it comes with a nice adapter all gold plated. Um, also with the headphone, interestingly enough, is a one meter cable with the uh, tip ring sleeve 3.5 millimeter plugs on one end for the headphones and their new Pentacon uh, headphone jack or headphone plug. This is a headphone plug for balanced operation. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. And uh, you can see that this is a five segment tip ring 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 sleeve um, <clears throat> connection. Uh, I wasn't able to determine uh, which ones are which, but I would assume its tip is uh, plus left, minus left, plus right, minus right, and then a ground which may be attached to a shield, but it doesn't actually connect to the headphones in any way. That's just an assumption. Uh, maybe somebody can comment on the article in Inner Fidelity what the actual connections are. I wasn't able to dig that up. <clears throat> At any rate, um, this is Sony's new balanced connector. It's a little bit larger than a uh, 3.5 millimeter plug. It's 4.4 millimeters in diameter and it's a little bit smaller than a full-size quarter-inch headphone jack. And of course the advantage to that is that uh, it's a little sturdier than a regular 3.5 millimeter jack but it doesn't take up as much room inside the player or, or amplifier device as this would. So it's, it's kind of a cool jack for uh, portable use. 
um, because it's uh, durable but takes up less space. In this case, it's got a 90 degree angle connector on it. Um, the, the odd thing to me is, is that the long cable is the unbalanced cable and the short cable is the balanced cable and I kind of would have expected this to have a long cable on it and the 3.5 millimeter for a short cable. Don't know. And at the Y junction there's a plastic molded uh, piece um, to that's pretty nice. Okay, uh, uh, also with the unit comes a very nice presentation case. This is a leather bound case. It has a, a, a satin inside. It's got a, a number plate down here for the uh, serial number. So it's a very nice case, but it does not come with any kind of carrying case for the headphones, which I would have liked to see. All right, now onto the two big things about the headphone, and one of them is really big indeed, with a little twist of the wrist. Let's see if I can get at this on the camera. Boop. You can pop the headphone off, and now you can see the driver inside, and it is just enormous. You can see the flexure on the outside. The gray part in the middle there is a uh, magnesium dome. It's very thin, 30 micron thin magnesium dome. And around the outside is a flexure uh, uh, attached at its edges. And this is a liquid crystal polymer um, film that uh, is aluminized, has a, a aluminum deposited on it to increase the stiffness. Um, I've never seen a driver this big. <clears throat> and I have to say, I'm a little, uh, well, I guess skeptical would be the right word. That's a lot of plastic to stop from having modal vibrations when it's going to high frequencies. This is claimed to be a high res headphone. It should be, uh, Sony says it's responsive up to 120 kilohertz. Uh, but man, that's a lot of uh, surface area, that driver, and you can get bending modes where uh, normally a driver would piston in and out like this, but you can get situations where it's you know, making all sorts of flexures. Again, I have some diagrams on the article at Interfidelity that you can see to give you an idea of what modal breakup is, but um, it's very hard to me, for me to believe you can get a diaphragm that that's, that's that large without modal breakup. Uh, but they say they have, so, so it is. Uh, uh, and then the other thing is this housing on the outside. Um, underneath there's a plastic former and on the outside there's this uh, stainless steel mesh that's been chrome, uh, I think it's chrome plated. Um, it's very, very nicely done. I, uh, I really applaud them on this design. And in between the two, in between the former and this outside part mesh is a, a, a paper uh, uh, mat. Um, it, they use a, a thing called Japanese washi paper, which is a long fiber paper. In this case, it's made from Canadian uh, softwoods. And uh, this mat acts as, they call it an acoustic filter. I'm used to calling it a, an acoustic resistor. It's a lot like the uh, aperiodic vents that some people put in small speakers um, to make the box seem a little bit bigger and spoil the cue of the box. Uh, they're in those those are called vario vents. Um, I think ScanSpeak makes them. At any rate, um, I think this is a very good idea, actually, of making the capsule uh, back out of a sort of semi-permeable, resistive um, material. Uh, uh, so I, 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 that's a very interesting piece of technology and, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see people start using aperiodic vents and headphones because um, they, they p pay off very well in speaker designs at any rate. Also you'll notice the shape is very unusual. It has this curved shape. Uh, I think they did this to disperse the back wave from the driver um, by making it go in many different directions due to the curvature of the surface. And again, in the article on Interfidelity and the review, I've got a little diagram that shows you how the rays might bounce around in there. But I, I thought it's a cool piece of technology. I mean, uh, it, it's pretty innovative. So a lot of innovation in this headphone. Uh, a lot of unusual characteristics of the headphone and its uh, design. Uh, so how do they sound? Well, uh, they have, initially they sound a little, uh, like a warm headphone. 
um, and that has some sparkle up on top. So maybe a little smiley shape. But on further listen, to me, they're, they kind of fall apart. For starters, you have this a, a, a bass boost, but the bass boost extends too far in the mid-range, and it's a little too high. So it's got too much uh, um, thick bass, uh, I would characterize it as. Uh, and the quality of the bass is okay, not, not really great, but it's pretty good. Um, the mid-range uh, up into the treble seems a little bit recessed. Um, certainly the presence area seems recessed to me, gives it a slightly veiled sound, and of course with the boosted bass go, bleeding into the mid-range, it kind of makes it too warm. Um, and then there, there's a very sharp peak at 3K where there normally is a, a more gradual uh, peak and drop. Um, and then after the 3K peak, it drops uh, very, very rapidly uh, between 4 and 5, 6K. It, it seems um, to be too withdrawn. And what I hear when that happens is a lack of body to cymbals. They, there's not, just not a lot of meat to the sound. Um, and, and at 10K, there's an enormous... Uh, enormous? Yeah, a pretty big peak at 10K. Now... Uh, a peak at 5K will drill holes in your head and would be very, very obnoxious. And peak at 10K, a lot of headphones have peaks at 10K. So it's it's kind of okay to see a peak at 10K in the measurements. And But this peak is, is really strong. And um, what happens is with that reduced 4 to 5K energy and that strong 10K peak, you got a lot of you know zing and and sizzle around the the cymbals but not a lot of that the meaty tang and so i i find it gives it a very uh a not natural sound and and um in addition the peak at 10k just gets an, you know tiring after a while above 10k it kind of falls off normally <clears throat> um so all in all as i went between this headphone and mr speaker's uh e uh, Ether C flow and the new Eon, Aeon and uh, uh, I use the Sonoma um, Electrostat for tonality. Um, what I, I I couldn't get away from the sense that every time I switched to another headphone, the whole of the music was once again coherent and and present. And with these headphones, it just kind of broke down. It didn't feel coherent and continuous and I didn't hear the whole of the music throughout the, all the listening sessions. I really never started to tap my feet or get into the music. It was just uh, too disjointed. Now I'm not saying they're a bad sounding headphone. They, they're okay sounding. But for $2,299, they, they need to be way better than okay sounding. Um, truthfully, I sat there bet between the Audio Technica ATH M50X, which is like a $150 headphone or whatever it is, and um, I would prefer to listen to that than these because these were just tiring and and so um, I can't recommend them. Sorry for all their good looks and technology and interesting things that they're doing in here. In the end, I, I think they need to listen to their headphones more. I think they need to, you know, not be so enamored with their technical skills and, and spend more time just tuning and tweaking at the end. You, you, you can't buy into all these technologies and then just not listen to them. Now, I don't know. Maybe they like this tuning, but uh, I sure didn't. So, not recommended. Beautiful headphone. Fine one to look at. It's a lovely thing. Comfortable to wear, but I just don't think they deliver on the sound front for $2,299. Sorry to say. Very disappointing. I mean, they did this MDR R10 that was about the same price in those dollars 30 years ago almost. And and I don't think they've gotten back up to that level since. And, and I would certainly love to see them do that. All right. We'll see you next time.